Yeah. So, you know, one thing that I feel like the Lord is is really breathing on right, right now is uh, this whole idea of being transformed. So we just talked about it, right? That's what I live for. I think he's always inviting us to be transformed. But, uh, you know, when Paul says that as we behold Jesus, that's when we're transformed from glory to glory. I do sense that we're in that two. You know, we, I preached on this not too long ago. We're in the middle of the glory to glory. But that two can be painful. That too mm. is a recognition. There's some things in us that Great is thought. not of the Lord. Great thought. And really that too, to me, it's it requires death before resurrection. And so I think the church, capital C, is in the midst of that. And we need to learn how to die in order that we can really come to life. And, and so you're right. Simplicity, I think, is a huge part of that. We've made uh, church uh, a business. We've made church uh super attractional carnival how do we keep people uh entertained how do we keep people coming back how do i keep my hand in their pockets and i think that the lord is is done with those idols and i think in the season he's leveraging whether he caused this or whether he's leveraging it i don't know you may have a better thought philip than i have but i do know he's working in the midst of this and i think he's refining yeah. his bride he's inviting us to prepare like we see in revelation 19 and in this season, I think he's getting our eyes back on him, that he really is enough and that churches uh, are going to have to get back to his presence, that we are people that gather around his presence, not around a famous pastor, not around an incredible band, not around a building or a vision statement. But we are getting back to the simplicity of David's heart, which is I'm going to first seek his presence. I'm going to I'm going to be content with dwelling in his temple and inquiring of his voice and uh to me that's the way i'm trying to lead personally you know my own life but also our church uh, our community to get back to the simplicity of walking with the lord fellowship with jesus uh, that's way more about not the knowledge it's about experientially hearing him knowing him saying yes to him and seeing the kingdom come in power uh, not just in word that is so, what, I, what I've learned in life, I've been traveling and speaking in America for 52 years. So I've been around a wee while. Yeah. And, and this thing is so insidious in that, you know, we start off and our hearts are pure and this is what we want. And it's, you know, I, it, Jesus is all we need and we've got to, you know, focus on him. And then someone comes along with a new teaching and we kind of move over the, you know, the bed a bit and let that come in and that's, well, that's there. And then a new style of, of worship comes in and we make room for that. And I travel in churches and speak. And what, what amazes me is the, the different fads of music and, and st style of clothes. I mean, down to that point of it all and how everyone is mm -hmm. being swayed by these opinion makers. But that doesn't necessarily mm -hmm. mean that we're glorifying Jesus anymore. And we can get we can get ourselves, you know, all caught up in the, this is the newest thing. This is the latest sound. And you go from one church to the other and it's a sausage machine. You know, when I when the Holy Ghost fell in the Camerons all those years ago, we danced before the Lord. And the new thing is when every time I watch a, a praise and worship team from a, 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 a main church, all the worship guys go back and forward. So they'll walk to the front and then they'll, they'll walk backwards. And there's about six of them doing you know back and forth and and. It's wonderful, and I, I and I love lights, and I love smoke, and I love all that stuff. Fine, but the moment you think that that is the answer to what your church needs, you have just lost the plot completely. What we need is Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. And I, I do think that's one of the ways that American church, and you could probably tell me, you know, worldwide, you, we bought into this franchise style of church where, okay, this church down the road's having success. So I'm going to try to export exactly what they're doing and do it in my context, but that doesn't require the Holy spirit. And I don't want to be a part of a church that doesn't require the Holy spirit to operate. And so I love learning. I think there's humility and learning from other people and, you know, music, you know, it comes and goes and changes with generations, which I'm fine with learning. But I, I think what the Lord is desiring back and his leaders is a person who knows who they are in Christ. And I don't have to try to be Philip. I don't have to try to be, you know, Andy Stanley, Bill Johnson, whoever these other people are. I can learn from them with humility. But God's called me to lead my church. I can learn from you. I can learn from others. But I need the Spirit of God teaching me and leading me. And so I got to know who He made me and and really the identity of our church. What's He desire for us? And so we're endeavoring to do that. We try to help other churches and and leaders and people in our in our own church know who God made them to be. Obviously their general identity, but we also believe that He gives us a kingdom identity. He calls us by name, and and so we, we feel like if you know your identity, um, 
you take that everywhere. No matter whether you're in vocational ministry, whether you're working as an engineer, like I used to be. Uh, and so we want to be that as a church. We don't want to be copycats. You know, God's always doing something new um, and something different in each region. So an yeah. identity, ident knowing who you are is the key mm -hmm. to going where you want to go and need to go. Mm -hmm. my, my dad adopted, my brother is pastoring a church in Scotland called Apex in the, my hometown in Peterhead, Scotland, right in the northeast corner. And we adopted my brother Neil when he was 10 months old. And the unique thing about my brother Neil is he's black. So here we were in the northeast of Scotland in a town with no black people in it at all. And my mom and dad adopted this little baby whose birth mother was a white Scottish nurse and his father was an African doctor. And uh, so this wee fella came to our, our town and I mean, the, everyone knew that's, that's Neil, that's, that's Neil. Mm -hmm. But my father, every time my dad addressed him, he called him Neil Cameron. Listen to me, Neil Cameron. Mm -hmm. God's got a plan for your life, mm -hmm. Neil Cameron. And, and he literally mm -hmm. used his tongue and his, and his words to affirm in this little boy that no one else wanted. Mm -hmm that you, who you are, and he gave him a name and he, and he in, imposed upon him the identity that he, wasn't, uh, he was no longer an orphan. His name was Neil Cameron. And now he is Come the most on. amazing man of God, most loved pastor in, in our town back in Scotland, has a great church. And I believe it came from his identity being put on him and being reinforced in his spirit. And I know there are folk watching today, and if, you, if you're copying someone, all you are is a poor copy. Muhammad Ali danced and boxed like only Muhammad Ali can dance and box. And if you try to be Muhammad Ali, I promise you, you're going to get your head taken off. Because that was his gift. But when you and I understand, my dad used to say this great, great phrase, we are spiritually natural and naturally spiritual. So when we find who we are in the Lord Jesus, and I, I know I'm talking to some folk today, maybe you're a Christian, just you're not in the ministry, but and you're, you're trying to keep up with the Joneses spiritually. You're trying to be something that you're not. He knows you. He understands you. He made you as you are. And, and as you are is enough. You don't have to add anything else. Just if you go to the Lord in simplicity and say, use me. Help me do what you've called me to do. He'll do the rest. And man, that is, that is so, that's so true that unless we get our identity right, we'll end up producing yeah. something that's foreign to what God's purpose for is in our life.